Rainbow Six Siege had a bumpy start to say the least, but since then it has had continuous growth as the development team has doubled down on updates, content schedules, player feedback, and embracing the game's competitive core. With all that progress, the game is increasing in complexity as it evolves, creating a better game, yes, but also a steeper learning curve for new players with each edition. This week on Pixel Report, we are looking into the time investment needed to get into Rainbow Six Siege and the cost it comes at for new players. When I'm talking about cost in this video, I will occasionally discuss actual money values, but mostly the cost that I'm thinking about is time. 20 hours. That's what I told my dad when I gave him a copy of Siege, right after he built his first gaming computer. It will take about 20 hours for you to get comfortable with the game. Not good, just comfortable. He's not new to gaming either. Quite the opposite, he actually used to destroy my brother and I back when Black Ops 1 and 2 were his thing, but I informed him that Siege was a different beast. Sure enough, about 20 hours of training situations and the occasional online casual match, he could hold his own. For my dad, the cost of admission to be comfortable playing the game was about what I expected, and I believe that cost is about the same for every new Siege player. You see, the time required to become familiar with a game depends heavily on the literacy of the player. And I'm not talking about reading literacy, I'm talking about gaming literacy, or more specifically, multiplayer FPS literacy. When you pick up a book, you know the structure, the rules, what to expect, at least where form and format are concerned. The same also goes for movies, music, and in this case, multiplayer FPS games. You know what to expect, normally. Because of that literacy, I can go from playing Battlefield to Call of Duty to Overwatch to Titanfall and only need a short time to adjust to or learn the game, most of which is spent getting used to new key bindings or controller layouts, rarely rules. Siege, however, requires a significant amount of time initially to learn and understand its rules, and more time than traditional games to refresh those rules after taking a break. Simply put, the core is still the same as other shooters, but with enough complexity to require a larger time investment to be effective against other players. Now, the time a player spends adjusting to Siege can be broken up into two sections, maps and operators. But before we talk about that, I think it's important to know why it's so important to understand both. And you might have guessed it, it's time. Not just time in learning, but time in playing. You see, the multiplayer of Siege is different than most other multiplayer shooters, with each round separated into two sections totaling, in ranked mode, 3 minutes and 40 seconds, with 40 seconds used as prep, allowing the defenders to fortify and the attackers to scout using drones. The remaining three minutes are for the rest of the battle. An additional minute is added for casual matches. This means that your time in the map cannot be used just wandering around getting used to the map or your operator's abilities. Time is short and your opponents can be relentless. Your existing knowledge of operators and maps is key to being a supportive member for your squad, and ultimately for success. The maps you play in Siege are small but make up for their size with complexity. Map layouts, for example, can take some time to get used to with 19 maps in total, day and night versions, 3 different game modes, and numerous objective locations per map. This is a lot of variables to learn. But that's just a start, every map has an additional array of factors. Destructible walls, cameras, windows, sightlines, trapdoors, drone holes, sniper perches, and repelling walls, all of which you should be aware of. Memorization is not necessary, but an understanding is. For example, it's easier to find cameras when they're lit up red, but that also means that the other team is using them to check up on you and your team. In contrast, trap doors, windows, and drone holes are easy enough to recognize in the heat of the moment. However, what really distinguishes Siege from other shooters is the destruction. Ever since we saw that first trailer, it was clear that the maps, or more importantly, the destruction of the maps, would make Siege stand out from the competition. Most multiplayer games use the environment as a backdrop to the battle, setting the stage for the fight with atmosphere, location, and maybe some story or background. Battlefield has been doing destruction since Bad Company, but never on this detailed scale. It's always been simplified. Walls, large chunks of concrete, or an entire building. Destruction is used primarily for simple but easy destroyed cover. Siege takes destruction to another level. 
Most walls, all doors, nearly all windows can be reinforced, destroyed, or broken incrementally. The maps are like characters, each with different quirks and weak points that can be exploited. Resetting after each round, they still go through a significant change during the battles. Sometimes the destruction is small, and other times it seems like someone brought in the mech from Red Faction and just went to town. So how would a new player learn all this? Games like Battlefield have used the campaign to act as a tutorial, so when the credits have rolled, you're ready to jump into the multiplayer, for the most part. Siege, on the other hand, has Situations, a game mode that doubles as a tutorial for new players to get introduced to maps, objectives, and operators. Now these operators might have been easy to jump into and understand when the game was just released, when they were just 20, but as of now, the game has 42, with another two expected by the end of 2018. Each of these comes with a unique weapon, support tools, stats, and a special ability that you will need to learn. Now I'm not saying that you need to know each operator and how they work, but there are a lot of subtle clues, especially in audio, that can inform an experienced player a lot more than someone new to the game. For example, Siege uses audio cues to tell the player what other players are doing. Sound and effect. This is used largely for each operator and their special ability. Other sounds like operators walking through barbed wire or a wall being barricaded are just as important to recognize too. The sheer number of audio cues that exist in Siege is astounding, and learning them all takes time. Lots of time. This is not even accounting for the long-term goals the development team is aiming for. At the 2018 Six Invitational, the developers said that if they got their way, the community could expect 100 operators over the 10-year lifespan of the game. New Siege players would be facing an absurd learning curve in those final years requiring an even larger time cost for admission. Right now, the price of buying into Siege is relatively low with it going on sale regularly, but the cost in time dwarfs the money investment. And I feel that as time goes on, it will be the cost in time that will hold back gamers who might be interested. Ubisoft has been trying to get new players involved through free-to-play weekends, but the restricted time of one weekend and the need to sink in about 20 hours to feel comfortable in matchmaking don't add up. My hypothetical long-term solution to this would be to make the base game free-to-play, forever. Growing revenue through their marketplace and the option for players to purchase operators for each new year like they already have. Increasing the player count by making it free could easily make up for the cost with an increasing users to purchase in-game cosmetic items or operators. By no means am I suggesting the cost bump of operators or year pass increases, just getting more people online. Because that's both good for gamers and the developers. Doing this would provide new players as much time as they need to become effective. Rainbow Six Siege has had a lot of great things going for it, and stands out as something new in the FPS online landscape. Its focus on strategy, tactical destruction, and glass cannon firefights creates a truly engaging experience, but stands as a wall to new players. Like any game, time is the cost of admission. While some cost more and others less, time can be one of the most influential factors for gamers getting into something new. While I don't suspect the time cost for Siege to change, I do believe that eliminating the upfront purchase costs would only help grow the community and its larger impact on shooters to come. What do you think could be done to bring new players to Siege while keeping in mind the time investment needed? Do you have any questions or comments about the video? Drop them down in the comment section or check out my YouTube channel where I'll be streaming Siege all day today and answering any questions you might have. Do you want to see more videos like this one? Please remember to subscribe and to support this video and more like it, consider supporting me at patreon.com slash pixel report, where my first 20 supporters will be forever on my video credits, no matter how much they pledge. Until next Thursday, this is Devin J and this is Pixel Report.